So uh, when is GPT-5 coming out again? I don't know. That's the honest answer. Oh, that's the honest answer. Is it blink twice if it's this year? <laughs> I also, we will release an amazing new model this year. I don't know what we'll call it. So that goes to the question of like, what? what's the way we release this thing? We'll release over in the coming months, many different things. Uh, I think that'd be very cool. Uh, I think before we talk about like a GPT-5 like model called that or called or not called that or a little bit worse or a little bit better than what, what you'd expect from a GPT-5, I think we have a lot of other important things to release first. I don't know what to expect from GPT-5. You're, you're, <laughs> you're making me nervous and excited. Uh, what, what are some of the biggest challenges and bottlenecks to overcome for whatever it ends up being called, but let's call it GPT-5. Just interesting to ask, what are, is it on the compute side? Is it on the technical it's side? It's always all of these. I was, I was, I was, you know, what's the one big unlock? Is it, is it a bigger computer? Is it like a new secret? Is it something else? Um, it's all of these things together. Like the thing that OpenAI, I think, does really well. This is actually an original Ilya quote that I'm going to butcher, but it's something like, we multiply 200 medium-sized things together into one giant thing. So there's this uh, distributed constant innovation happening. Yeah. So even on the technical side, like- uh, Especially on the technical side. So like even like detailed approaches, like yeah. de detailed aspects of every, how does that work with different disparate teams and so on? Like how, how do they, how do, how do the medium-sized things become one whole giant transformer? How does this? There's a few people who have to like think about putting the whole thing together, but a lot of people try to keep most of the picture in their head. Oh, like the individual teams, individual contributors try to keep At the At a high picture. level, yeah. I mean, you don't know exactly how every piece works, of course, but one thing I generally believe is that it's sometimes useful to zoom out and look at the entire map. And... And I think this is true for like a technical problem. I think this is true for like innovating in business. Uh, but things come together in surprising ways and having an understanding of that whole picture, even if most of the time you're operating in the weeds in one area, pays off with surprising insights. In fact, one of the things that I used to have and I think was super valuable was I used to have like a a good map of that, all of the frontier, or most of the frontiers in the tech industry. And I could sometimes see these connections or new things that were possible that if I were only, you know, deep in one area, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to like have the idea for because I wouldn't have all the data. And I don't really have that much anymore. I'm like super deep now. Um, but I know that it's a valuable thing. You're not the man you used to be, Sam. Very different job now than what I used to have. <laughs> 